This is your AC circuits lab. Uh, the lab consists of three parts. Uh, the first part is a series RC circuit. The second part is a series RL circuit. In both the first and second parts, you're going to basically test Ohm's law and uh, the phase relationship and see how well they match to the theory. And then the third part is a series RLC circuit uh, and you look for uh, the resonance peak. Uh, so we have all three components. Right here we have a resistor. Um, don't worry about the color coding. We're going to use an ohmmeter to measure the resistance. Uh, I think for the value that I gave you in the write-up, this is roughly 485 ohms. We've got a capacitor. That's this blue uh, chiclet-looking device right here. We'll use our uh, capacitor meter to measure its capacitance, and for this one, it's about 0.44 microfarads. The new device is this one right here. This is an inductor. So let me bring it around here. You'll notice it's roughly the same size as the resistor and the capacitor. And you'll notice that there's a small iron core. And then you'll notice that it's wrapped many times very tightly with a very long, very thin wire. Now, the capacitor meter that we use to measure the capacitance also can measure inductance. Uh, and the inductance for this inductor is about 21 or 22 millihenries. Um, the problem is, is that that wire that makes up the coil is very long and very thin, so it offers uh, substantial resistance. So we have to go back and use the ohm meter to measure the resistance of this coil. And for this particular coil, it works out to be about 111 ohms. So that's a substantial number of ohms. It's roughly about one-fifth of this dedicated resistor. So for our first circuit, we've got an RC circuit. So you'll notice I have the R and the C in series, and it's hooked up to this device, which is a signal generator. The signal generator basically produces a sinusoidally changing current. I've got a set of buttons up here for the scale, and then I can fine tune it using this dial right here. So you'll notice that it's set to the 1000 scale, and the dial is set to roughly one. So this signal um, that this device is producing is roughly 1000 hertz. Um, the only other button I need to worry about is this amplitude button, uh, and I want to make, I'll be varying this uh, to ensure that the voltage drop across the two ends of the power supply here and here, that voltage drop, we want to keep that at a constant three volts. Okay, so in order to measure the voltage, we've got our uh, multimeter here. I'll set it to AC amps. I've got my two ports. Now, since I need to measure the voltage across the resistor right here and the voltage across or coming from the power supply, which is right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook this one up right here because that'll act as my common high potential for both measurements. So if I measure for right now the voltage coming out of the power supply, so I'll put my negative probe right here, it looks like we're getting about 3.42 volts. If I remove it and put it right here, that'll give me the voltage drop across the resistor. And you can see that that's a different value. It's about a little under 2.7 volts. Okay, and then of course the difference has something to do with the voltage drop across the capacitor. Okay, so uh, if you follow the instructions, it's fairly straightforward. You just vary the frequency, make sure the voltage across the power supply is roughly three volts. Then you simply measure the voltage drop across this and the voltage drop across this. The final part uh, is to measure the phase angle. So we have a oscilloscope right here. And an oscilloscope is basically a two-dimensional voltmeter. It measures voltage or expresses voltage across the a vertical axis and time along the horizontal axis. Because remember, um, as the uh, current sinusoidally changes, the instantaneous voltage or current, whatever it is that you're measuring, is constantly changing as well. So we should expect to get some sinusoidal plots on here. So I've got two channels. Um, the first channel right here, channel one, I'm going to put across the resistor. So that'll measure the voltage across the resistor, but then I can pretend that that's the current, because remember the current and the voltage across the resistor are in phase. So that's this yellow button right here, so that will correspond to this yellow or green curve right here. So let me hook that up. So I'll take channel one and put it across the resistor right here. 
go back to my oscilloscope, and I'm getting a sinusoidal signal. Channel 2, that'll be this purple or blue one. I'm going to put that across the capacitor. So let me do that. I'll put it across right here. And let's go back to the oscilloscope. And there you go. And the first thing you want to notice is that there's a phase shift. Remember the green or the yellow one, that's this one that I'm moving up and down. That basically represents the current. The purple or the bluish one, that's this one that I'm moving up and down, that represents the voltage across the capacitor. Well, if time flows from left to right, you can clearly see that the current peaks before the voltage across the capacitor. Um, the differences in those two peaks, the uh, horizontal difference, will represent the phase angle. Well, I can measure the phase angle very simply. If I simply take the plots, and if I take that green or yellow curve and put it right on top of that main line right there, you'll notice that we've got about one, two, three, four divisions from peak to peak. So it looks like 360 degrees is equivalent to four divisions. Well, it looks like the number of divisions between the current and the voltage across the capacitor is less than one division. It looks like it's about 0.4, maybe 0.45 divisions. So if 360 degrees is equivalent to four divisions, then phi is equivalent to 0.45 divisions. So by stepping up a simple ratio, I can calculate what the phase angle is, and then I'll compare it to uh, what it should be based on the frequency and the capacitance. So the frequency right now, you'll see I have 986.4 hertz. So I could slightly increase it to start at 1,000. Oh, other way. So that's about 1,004 or 1,005 hertz. I still see a substantial phase difference. Um, so I can use that ratio idea to figure out the phase angle. I can use my voltmeter to measure the voltage across the resistor and the capacitor and then and fill in the table and then compare them to the theoretical values. Okay, for the second part, the RL circuit, I'll simply remove the capacitor and put in the inductor. I leave everything else the same. I use the same three frequencies. I ensure that the amplitude uh, gives me roughly three volts coming out and then I use my voltmeter to measure the voltage across the resistor and the voltage across the inductor. Now the problem is, is that the voltage across the inductor is going to be composed of two parts. There's the voltage drop due to Faraday's law because of the changing magnetic field, and then there's also the voltage drop due to Ohm's law because of the resistance of the coil. The problem is this voltmeter can't distinguish them. So that's why we call this V sub L. This reading that you see, or the values that I put in the table, is V sub L. That's coming from this device right here. The problem is, is what I want is V of the coil. So since this is a series circuit, I can use Ohm's law to figure out the current, and then from the current, I can figure out the voltage drop due to the resistance of the coil. Uh, that's what I called V sub R. Um, because they're 90 degrees out of phase, I can use my idea of phasers and the Pythagorean theorem, and then I can use that to figure out just the voltage due to Faraday's law, which is what we call via the coil. So that's the only difference for the second part. Everything else is identical. Um, let me just show you this. This, again, is the RC circuit, where the current leads the uh, voltage across the capacitor. Let me very quickly just replace the capacitor with the coil just to show you how the phase change how the phase um, relationship changes so here I replace the capacitor with the coil now channel 2 on the oscilloscope will be the inductant uh, the voltage across the inductance and now you notice what happens now channel 2 is leading channel 1, so now the voltage across the inductor is leading the current, which is what we saw theoretically should occur. Again, I've got my frequency down there. I haven't changed it. And I'll use my meter here to measure the voltage across the resistor and the inductor. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to illustrate the third part. All you have to do is put all three together. Um, you don't need the oscilloscope for the third part. You simply need the voltmeter here. 
And again, as you change the frequency every 200 hertz, you change the amplitude here to make sure that the uh, signal generator is giving you um, three volts, and then you simply use the measure the voltage across the resistor. You could use the oscilloscope. Uh, it's kind of interesting if you keep the oscilloscope hooked up, you'll notice initially that the um, there will be a certain um, the current will either lag or lead uh, the, the source voltage, and then what will happen is as you get close to resonance, the phase angle will approach zero, and then when you go beyond resonance. Uh, the phase relationship will flip. You don't have to do that for this lab, but it is interesting to watch. Um, but I want to keep this video short, so I'm not going to illustrate um, the third part. Uh, so I'll stop here, and then you should have enough to work through your lab.